What's up, I'm Aiden. You are watching my barn conversion vlog. Today, well, I say this episode, we're going to be carrying on with the cart lodge. I'll take you over, I'll give you a little lowdown of what's happening. I noticed earlier when I was walking into the container, this one here was like crowned in the middle. See, I've got the laid of joists in. I knew that that one was going to be a bit off in comparison to the others. So, this is how it was finished. So obviously this is a block and beam floor. I got some uh, rapid cement and tried to flatten it off a little bit and then drilled in obviously these plates. So they're stainless steel, it's bolted in and then there's a nut that goes underneath and it winds up the post. So I've wound it down slightly and tried to pull it down a little bit. It's still crowned a little bit, but I reckon I've taken about five mil off. So that will make it a little bit easier. They're all a bit crowned, so it's just one of them things. I've worked out how I'm going to put the um, joists in. Um, I've looked at the calculations from the structural engineer and it fouled on a deflection for the roof rafters, but he still obviously recommended that size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the dwarf wall just on the edge. So I'm going to double up this joist here slight dwarf fall and then across the top i'm also going to put like a bit of bracing so the span will be less hopefully it will take a little bit of the deflection out i'm just going to cut off some of these little pegs and then uh, go from there you don't know already I don't have a trade I just have a go I have done something similar to this before I've done my own loft conversion um, so I kind of half know what I'm doing but obviously don't take my word as gospel it's bloody cold this morning I've, I'm all wrapped up it looks like I'm going diving or something just got the chop saw out Dan's on crew today. So what we're gonna do is cut the joists, drop them in, and then we can nail in and everything. So all the joists I've laid under here, I'll just quickly show you. So your wood will no doubt never be straight. So on here, basically there's a big bow. So they're higher in the middle. And you always wanna face the higher bit upwards so what i've done is i laid them out between two builders trestles i've marked the tops so that i make sure that these face up so when you get it you get your bit of wood you iron down the edge and you can see which way it bends uh, i've laid out obviously the ones that are mostly the same so we can kind of go like it's even all the way across because we're gonna have to pack out the joists here and there if it's too low and stuff like that the bad ones I've left on the other side so we're going to work our way through these ones first and then I've still got some that I need to bring out Perfect. When you're cutting your boards down, the ends are never square. So if you check it, you get yourself a square, you'll see this a bit cut wonky. So 
we always chop the very end off before we actually cut the rest so you got both square ends this chop saw is the daddy of chop saws if you want one there's a, a link in the description they are quite expensive but they're well worth it plan over here is to double each joist as it goes across because in the middle here I'm going to have a stud wall that goes across because there's a shower room just on the end. Now I'm just strengthening up the wall so if you don't double up the joist below the stud wall it will sag, it will crack your plaster and stuff like that so I'm just making sure the structure engineer didn't say anything about this obviously he well the first structure engineer didn't know I was putting a stud wall across. I don't want building control to pull me up as well so I'm going to double each one once the hangers are here and um, it will just be more solid that way. double up joist there obviously the beams that's going to take the stud wall so now we're going to do noggins just in between here so that's little bits of wood if you've got a span that's over or up to two and a half meters you don't need any noggins whatsoever two and a half meters to four and a half meters you need one noggin mid span it's all just to stiffen the floor if you go over four and a half meter span you should have noggins at the third points really you should be putting noggins at the hanger ends as well but because we're having a structural floor which is the p5 22 mil chipboard plus osb underneath it's going to be very stiff as it is anyway We are all joisted out. There's one joist missing, the double one right at the end. I'm waiting for some hangers off of parcel force. They were meant to deliver last Friday. Just absolutely rubbish. They claimed that this property doesn't exist, basically. So we're gonna lay down the P5. It's tongue and groove, it's 22 mil. And um, the system that I've got, there's it's covered on top so that gives it a bit of weather resistance but you're supposed to well the company the manufacturer says to glue it to the joist and glue the tongues and then secret screw it basically but I'm not gonna do that I'm not wasting my money on glue and everything like that I'm just gonna screw it we're gonna put loads of screws in and then instead of the special expensive tape that they've got we're gonna use gaffer tape but I'm not going to make you watch that. We've got to crack on really quickly. We've got three hours till the sun goes down and we need to get this whole roof done. Tape it, tarp it up, because it, it's going to be exposed for a little bit. I don't want to blow anything. So I'm going to leave you there. If you haven't already, please do subscribe, hit the bell notification. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.